So you've gone shopping, you've picked the Arduino you want to use, you brought it home, then you've plugged it in to make sure it works, everything's good. So what's the next step? Well now it's time to do something with it. So the first thing that I feel you should learn how to use your Arduino with is the digital read and digital write. So I want these terms to be very clear because they're going to be very important for the future projects you're going to do with your Arduino. The word digital in digital read and digital write means that there's no obscurity. It's either high or low, a zero or a one, a true or a false. It doesn't matter what you call them, but it's always a set value on or off. It's binary. It can either be a zero or a one. The other portion, the read and the write, you can think of it in terms of human terms. So if you're reading, that means you're taking information from the outside world, a book or a web page, and bring it inside of you. If you're writing, you're taking the information that's inside of you and putting it out there on a web page. You can write it on a page, piece of paper, whatever. The Arduino is the same thing. A digital read, your Arduino will take outside data and internalize it. A digital write, your Arduino will take internal data and put it outside. This does sound complicated, but it's not. It's really not. In fact, your Arduino already has a digital write built in. See this LED here? It's flashing on, off, on, off. Well, how do you think it's doing that? It has a program inside the Blink Sketch, the default one, that takes a value inside of its memory and puts it out. So this one specifically, the Uno, and actually most Arduinos, not all of them, the LED is connected to pin 13. So we can actually see the digital write happening. So it'll take the pin that uh, starts at ground potential. So the pin 13 is connected to ground when the LED is off. Then it'll switch it to a high state. So basically it'll bring up that pin from connected to ground. It'll disconnect it from ground. It'll connect it to five volts because this is a five volt Arduino. Same thing happens on a 3.3, but it brings it up to 3.3 volts. This LED is connected to that five volts and then to ground on the other side. So it turns on and then the Arduino will wait a second. It will pull that pin down, connect it back to ground. And so the LED will turn off and then it'll wait a second and it'll disconnect from ground and connect it to five volts and so on and so on. That is a digital write. Now to help you visualize this, I have an oscilloscope in roll mode, which I'll connect this onto. If you don't understand oscilloscopes, don't worry. You don't need to know them right now. I just want to show you the principle of a digital write. So the oscilloscope over here will now show you this is connected to ground. If you see the little one there, that means our zero volts is here. And then there's one volt per division. So we should go up five divisions, one, two, three, four, five, per pretty much five. It's a little bit of uh, noise in there, but it goes up five divisions for a second, down five divisions for a second. And it happens extremely quickly. You see this line is vertical, so it just switches very quickly from off to on. And once it gets to the off, it waits a second, then it goes to the on, then it waits a second, then it goes to the off, etc., etc. Actually, these things will do this ad infinitum. It'll do it forever. So the digital write is already in your Arduino. I'm going to make a little sketch here just so we can play with the digital read and the digital write at the same time because I find like they're the same concept. And at the same time, we're going to go over the syntax on how to use it. So here I have the Blink Sketch open. And the Blink Sketch is great. Actually, pretty much all the sketches are great for just learning the syntax and how things work. So you can tell there's a um, pin mode. So you've got to set the, the way that your pin is going to, to work. And you've got here the syntax for a digital write. Uh, 
usually you could just use a pin number instead of the built-in LED but either way you can use pin 13 this will work just the same but another really good resource I want to point you to is the Arduino.cc website they have a reference section which I often use to build my sketches because it shows you how to use the functions what syntax to use um, what it's expecting it really helps for things like that in the description of this video I'm going to put the links to the arduino.cc reference area where you can go and browse and I really do recommend that you go browse that but over here I have my sketch what I built for this tutorial so I'll go through this line by line and some of the stuff will be a little bit complicated but I promise you it's not I'll just explain it in plain English and if you don't get it um, don't worry we're gonna get to it so the first thing here is the void setup so that's what we put on our that's the uh, instructions to do as soon as the Arduino boots up it only run once so first we want to set our pin modes we're going to be using pin 8 and 12 I used um, 8 and 12 I just picked random ones 12 because it's close to a ground on the board and it's not the LED pin so 8 is going to be our input so pin mode 8 will be an input so it'll actually be reading from that pin and pin 12 will be an output so it'll be writing on that pin here is just something nice you don't have to put this but I like to put this I like to set my pin into a known state on boot up so no matter what happens we know that pin 12 should be writing low when the Arduino boots up next is the void loop the void loop is the part of the Arduino that will just keep repeating ad infinitum just keep going forever and this tiny little block of code here is the crux of this tutorial so I'm just gonna read this in plain English and then go over it so if pin 8 is high aka connected to 5 volts then I want the Arduino to make pin 12 high aka connected to 5 volts or else pin 12 should be connected to ground so basically this means check pin 8 if pin 8 is connected to 5 volts it's high make pin 12 high and we know since it's digital if it's not high then pin 8 will be low therefore if it's low make pin 12 low connected to ground so if we go and connect an LED to pin 12 if pin 8 reads 5 volts pin 12 will be pushed up to 5 volts the LED will light if pin 8 is not at 5 volts it's at ground then pin 12 will be pulled to ground as well so let's just upload this to our Arduino and then I'll show you a super simple circuit to make all of this work so here we have our super simple circuit to test out this sketch and in this circuit it's only two resistors a switch and an LED so from pin 8 don't forget that is our uh, read pin we have the 150 ohm resistor it's just good practice to have it there the value doesn't really matter you just want something you know 100 to 1000 maybe 5000 ohms something to limit current basically um, and it is connected in the natural the normally closed side of the switch to ground so basically as the circuit sits right now this switch is connected to ground and the ground I'm just picking it off with this black wire from the Arduino itself terminal GND and on the other side I'm taking 5 volts from the 5 volt terminal on the Arduino itself as well so you see they go to the switch on these connections when I click the switch this here will swap over to this side here it'll get connected to 5 volts through that 150 ohm resistor in pin 8 and that's all that that side of the circuit does on the other side we've got pin 12 pin 12 is our right pin 
and it's connected to a 150 ohm resistor inside the leg of this LED. I had built these a while ago. It's a lot easier to just have them in the leg. And then through the LED and then to ground, uh, pin 12 is up here and I will use the ground terminal that's actually two pins away. So ground and actually I should put that this way. There we go. So that's in there. And then I just have the pin eight here come over to the breadboard, to this 150 ohm resistor, 150 ohm resistor, to the common terminal of this switch. So basically when I leave this open, it should be connected to ground so this LED should stay off. When I click this on, the LED should turn on because we're gonna present five volts to pin eight. So let's see, first things first, is the LED going to light when I plug it in? Because it should not. As long as I plugged it into the right place, that is. Okay, the Arduino is on, and right now the LED is off. So that either means that our sketch is working or that my LED is burnt. Let's see, when I click this button, that LED should turn on. Boom, it turns on. And you'll see that it checks this so often, it checks the state of the pin so often that you can click this as fast as you want and you'll never trump it. It'll always match the state of that pin. So that's a pretty good uh, pretty good example of how it works. Right now um, pin 8 is connected to ground and therefore pin 12 will stay low connected to ground. Then I click this and now we're sending 5 volts to pin 8. The Arduino is reading that and swapping pin 12 to, to 5 volts as well. So basically 0 volts here, 0 volts there, 5 volts here, 5 volts there. That simple. There is one more caveat I want to show you guys before we move on to the next video though. So we know what happens to the digital read and the digital write when the read reads 5 volts or ground, right? If it reads 5 volts, it'll read high. If it reads ground, it'll read low. But what happens if you feed it 4.5 volts or 4 volts or 3.5 volts or 2? How are we going to know what state the pin is going to read? Because don't forget, it's digital. It's either high or low. Well, if you look at the data sheet for the AT Mega 328P, the actual chip on the Arduino, it'll tell you that there's actually a threshold for high and low. Um, we could look at the data sheet, but why do that when we can just hook up a voltage divider, so in this case a potentiometer. Pin 8 will be this, the wiper of the potentiometer, and it'll go around and have more or less resistance on it compared to the uh, five volts on the ground and therefore have a very varying voltage. We're gonna sweep it from one end to the other and see at what point this LED turns on. And we're gonna track it with this multimeter. Put this in volts and then we can plug this in. I have no idea what the state of this potentiometer is. There we go, so it's at 4.5 volts go a little bit higher so 4.7 volts all right and that's reading high I'm gonna flip this down 3.8 still reading high it would be better if you could see that so again go up okay 4.6 4.7 volts this uh, this wire here is going to the multimeter this black one here and it's the same wire as this pin this uh, brown wire going to pin 8 I'm going to wind that down until that light turns off. 3 3.5, 3.4, 3.3, 3.1, 2.9. See, it's still reading high. 2.2, oh, it turned off somewhere. Oh, look at that. It's sort of on. That's because it's uh, kind of flickering. It's reading 
2.2 something and then 2.2 something below. So it's fully on 2.7 and fully off. We're even getting spikes there at 1.4 volts. Not 100% sure why that is, but uh, we could probably scope that to find out. But yeah, basically, there's going to be a point at which enough is enough, and a high will be a high, and a low will be a low. It seems to be that it starts having trouble around 1.165 volts, 1.1 something volts. So yeah, you got to be careful. You have to send it a fairly clear signal that you want a high or a low. And there's ways around this, but that's kind of a little bit more advanced. For now, I want you guys, the viewers, I want you to go out and play with digital read, digital write, until you get a little bit more comfortable with it. Use different pins, use different sensors, different methods of switching the voltage high or low. You can even take the sense pin and you can plug it into the ground, plug it into the 5 volts. It's best to do it with the resistor, but I mean, these things are cheap, right? That's why we didn't buy a genuine one. So if you like this video, make sure you tune in for the next one, where I think we're going to be tackling a little bit more difficult of a tutorial on the analog read and analog write. But as always, thanks for watching.